Executive Director of the Arts Council for Monterey County, and I am the host of your show today. Our theme is empowering you through the arts. At the Arts Council, we believe that the arts are the answer for a whole range of things, but we're especially eager to talk about what happens for our youth, and our guests today are Colleen Bailey with the Monterey Jazz Festival, Juan Sanchez, who just created Palenque Arts, and we'll also be talking to Tom Nelson, who is the executive director of the Lyceum for Monterey County. They do a range of programs, but we're going to focus on the arts. And thank you, Colleen, for being with us today. This is really exciting to have you here. That's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So we're going to focus today on the next-gen part of the Jazz Festival because that's so youth-centric. But can you just talk a little bit about the mission of the Jazz Festival and maybe a little bit about how is it that you decided to do a Next Gen Festival? Sure, so the, um, the Monterey Jazz Festival is now in its 60th year. We're celebrating our 60th anniversary this Congratulations year. Congratulations also Thank for you. That. I, so I don't take personal credit for <laughs> it. I haven't been around that long yet. Um, but uh, it's the longest continuously running jazz festival in the world. In and the world. actually, um, something that a lot of people don't know about the, the Monterey Jazz Festival is that it was set up as a nonprofit from the very first. Mm -hmm. So that's not true for a lot of festivals, oh, music festivals. Okay. A lot okay. of them are corporate oh, right, of course, yeah. um, businesses. Yeah. But from the very beginning, our uh, festival was set up as a nonprofit and it had a focus on. Um, bringing up the next generation of jazz musicians. And so um, we have been working in education from the very beginning. Um, and so the Next Generation Jazz Festival, which is one of the largest, uh, most prestigious youth jazz festivals in the country, um, has been going for about 47 years. It started just as a county oh, wow. thing, kind of became a statewide thing, and now it's a national and even international competition. We had last year a group from Canada who came and uh, actually won one of the the groups, um, so it's it's uh, a growing thing, and um, it's a it's a free event for yeah. this all the students who participate, and anybody from the community can come to see the students. Um, so well, I know I've been there a bunch of times. Yeah. it's the most fun thing. It's ever. amazing, isn't it? The variety that you present of uh, vocal music, instrumentals, there's small groups, there's big bands, there's just about everything. But are you, you're typically uh, centered around the downtown Monterey. That's right. right. So um, we take over because there are so many components to it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were for many years in the conference center, but because it's being remodeled, we are in several different venues. But that's kind of a cool thing. So we'll be this year we'll be at the Golden State. So a oh, lot nice. of the big band competitions, our judges concert, which happens on mm -hmm. Friday night and kind of oh. opens the whole things where our, prof our professional jazz musicians who come and judge the whole thing play for all the students. So that happens on Friday night. Those, I love watching the students watch the professionals. I know. That, that's They're as much fun as watching. Note. They're hanging <laughs> on every <laughs> movement. They watch everything that's going on uh, yeah. so intently. And, and that, for some reason, I love just sitting in the mix and watching them, watching the students watch them. And uh, so that's part of the thrill for visitors, I think, to yeah. see. And so, so tell me more about when when somebody feels like my son is already a, a jazz musician he can say he's taking the classes with the orchestra in the schools he's there every morning um, and you can really see him intently learning intently practicing all these different things but it really seems to take a special commitment to be uh, strong enough good enough and maybe um, uh, dedicated enough to be part of next gen can you talk a little bit about what it would take, especially what does it take for somebody who is in Monterey County? Maybe they're in high school. They would have to be high school or college level, right? Uh, middle school, high school, or college. Middle school, too. Yeah. All right, so let's say somebody is in eighth or ninth grade there. They've really learned a lot. They've been practicing. Maybe they performed a little bit. How, what's the process where they would get into the next gen? Festival. festival. So yeah. in the festival itself, it's a competition to get into the festival. So that's not true and again of a lot of youth festivals. Where does that start? So um, it's online. It's an online process. Oh wow! Um, so we open up applications online. So if a school's interested in um, having its band compete, oh, um, or there's a conglomerate group that's a community-based group that wants to compete for this, you can go onto our website and you can submit an application. Um, we actually work with Berkeley School of Music and. 
Boston, um, and they actually judge this, so we don't judge it ourselves. Oh, and that's yeah. a way for us to really kind of take take a step back yeah. and make sure, because we know a lot of these kids, yeah. we know a lot of the band directors, so yeah. we're not taking um, an interest in that. Wow. Um, so we have them judge this, and then uh, we just announced our group, our, our finalists, um, and the people who are who are going to be at the festival well, just a few weeks ago. And I know we can get some of that information <coughs> and more on your website, mm -hmm. and we're also going to see a clip in a couple minutes. Can you tell me just a little bit about the mentoring that goes on um, that the jazz festival does? I know there's so many things you talked um, at, in the beginning about. Um, really being dedicated to bringing the young people forward. Can you talk a little bit about how that actually happens? It's not just a competition, right? There's also a lot of mentoring that happens. Absolutely, that. and I actually, you know, there's something about jazz in particular where there's there's um, sort of an understanding with jazz musicians, professional jazz musicians, that they have a responsibility oh. to bring up the mm -hmm. next group. Mm -hmm. So that's not true in a lot of other music forms, but it's true in jazz. And you can feel that even at our festival where we bring in these top professionals who are you know, celebrated national uh, celebrity types. And they come and they want to work with the kids. So we had um, Quincy Jones last year. Oh, yeah. Quincy Jones came. He listened to um, we, our Next Generation Jazz Orchestra play for him. He gave them feedback. He actually thought they were fabulous. Can you imagine you know, being a 16, 17-year-old kid and playing like two feet away from Quincy Jones? Swing, you know, a little bit. I think they were. You know, but, but thrilled, it though. thrilled, yeah. and yeah. it make it Honor. really um, it brings them up to another level. You know, it really pushes them to be their very best. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it, and you, and then he gives them feedback, and and uh, and so you know he wasn't paid to do that. That wasn't one of his responsibilities. Oh, wow. He chose to do that. That's amazing. Um, and we see that across the board in all our programs. But we also take, you know, we have very formalized programs where we're doing this. We have mm -hmm. a, a program called the Traveling Clinicians Program. Oh, right. And so that program brings in uh, professional jazz musicians from across the country, and they come every month during the school year, and they work with all the local bands, um, middle school and high school bands in Monterey County um, that will have us. So we're in 22 <laughs> schools right oh, now across wonderful. Monterey County. And uh, they come in and they work, um, you know, for a whole day with the, the, the students there and come back every month. So they really develop relationships with those students over time. And they are the people who really encourage those kids um, and the band directors to really think about the next steps, how to, you know, how to audition for the festival, how to prepare for an audition for the Next Generation Jazz Festival, how to, you know, some of the students, the, the individuals who are super talented, um, may be encouraged to audition for our Next Generation Jazz Orchestra, which is our national orchestra. Um, we had two Monterey County kids in that orchestra last year. Oh, That's, yes, I remember that. Yeah, 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 and they got to go to Japan on a two-week tour and sort of serve as a musical ambassador in Japan um, on behalf of the Monterey Jazz Festival. Can you talk about, when I was at the Jazz Festival, I saw some film clips about their experience. So can you just tell us a couple words about um, what it was like for a Monterey County student to be selected and then have that experience? I mean, it just must be amazing. It, it's amazing. I mean, this is one of the top orchestras in the country. So, um, you know, it's really a privilege to get into that. And it's been actually rare that Monterey County students have, have uh, been able to get in there. Yeah. And we had two this year, so that was fantastic. Yeah. So they felt very special. Yeah. And um, and then just getting to work with the level of talent from across mm -hmm, the country, mm -hmm. 21 students from across the country. Um, it, it Again, when you look at the level that they push themselves yeah. Um, yeah. to attain yeah. through that group, being around peers yeah. who take the music so seriously, who love it so much. The biggest complaint that I had on the trip, because I went on the trip with them, was that they didn't have enough time to practice. That's the kind. Of, you know, that's the kind of kids who are who are attracted to the music. That's right. But I find really throughout so many of the arts, it's people think of it. Oh, just expressing yourself, and they, they think of it as just a spontaneous burst of something that happens and kind of random. But what I see again and again, and especially in something like the Next Gen Jazz Festival or in those clips that you show where they're in Japan, that whole uh, commitment to mastery and finding the joy in the mastery and then the show sharing and showcasing their work with others, whether they have just a little bit of knowledge or great knowledge, is all part of the thrill for them and all part of their own 
um, development as a person. And you must have really felt true. that in Japan. I did, and it was interesting to see our students from the band teaching Japanese students. So, yeah. they, you know, a lot of the so in in Japan, they can't actually teach it, jazz in schools, but they have all these jazz clubs uh -huh. um, that are set up that are sort of like sports clubs. And um, actually, most of the Japanese students that play jazz are females, and um, so very different from <laughs> the United States. But to watch how our students taught their practice mm -hmm. skills, like these are the things you should practice yeah, and amazing. ways that you can practice, teaching amazing. that um, to the Japanese students and then, you know, really rehearsing with them and, and looking at the music um, and, and what they can do to improve. And again, that mentorship, mm -hmm. um, that peer-to-peer -e -peer mentorship, so it's not older kids to younger kids, it's, it's peer relationships that are built around the music. And they don't all speak the same language in <laughs> so terms of, you know, Japanese literally. and English. <laughs> literally. But they speak the, music, they, yeah. the, the language of music. And it was amazing how they could communicate with each other. But that seems like the, the most, um, most relevant to, like, the workforce or, you know, as people think about bigger picture things, what's next for all these kids whether they become professionals or not. Learning to listen, learning when to take your place and when to step back, when to, how to be a part of, I mean, they're practicing so hard all day by themselves, you know, doing their thing. Like you say, they need that practice time, they want it. They thrive on that, and yet, then they have to come forward, sit in, and now it's a group. Yeah. Now it's a team effort, and so blending what they want to do, what they can do with everyone else's voice. I mean, that's really magic there, too. Well, that's one of the keys about music, I think, you know? Um, and it's not just an intellectual process, mm -hmm. it's an emotional process. And that's yes. the combination yeah. that yeah. lights up the whole brain. That's it. And um, so you think about preparing kids for all the challenges of the lifetime. Yeah. And music does that, I think, almost better than anything else. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. does. Um, so a lot of these kids go on, they don't necessarily go on as professional musicians, yeah. some do. A lot of them go into engineering. You see, yes, um, you know, and I think actually jazz music prepares kids for engineering probably better than anything else <laughs> because you get the mathematical yeah. elements of music. Um, but you also get the risk taking. So when you look at you know Google yeah. and yeah. Apple yeah. and yeah. all these companies that are looking for people who innovate. can innovate, who can yeah. create things and aren't afraid of making a mistake, yeah. um, because many times the innovations won't go anywhere. But yeah. you've got it for as many you know you've got to find the one thing that does work. So you've yeah. got to innovate constantly, and uh, that's what you do in jazz. That's you know through improvisation, you're constantly listening, responding, and innovating in the moment. Um, and they're not afraid to do that. They're That's trained to do that. And it's within, you know, so it's not just random notes. <laughs> they're not, you know, they have to understand the framework yeah. Yeah. Um, and the context. Um, but it's, it's a constant innovation process. And uh, our students are, they tend to be uh, very engaged. They're, they are great listeners, not always great talkers. Um, you know, they're, they're more into listening than they are into talking. And they tend to communicate through their instrument more uh -huh. than they do through their words with few exceptions. <laughs> well, we're going to take a look at the clips that you've brought. Great. Can you set that up for yes. us? Yes. So I said this year is our 60th anniversary year. And so what you will see is a sizzle reel that was uh, produced by uh, Fred Teo. Uh, Fred is a jazz lover. He's from Cuba originally, uh, worked for Disney, and um, uh, then went up to work for Steve Jobs at Apple and created content for them. And he's wow. done this beautiful job to create something that I think tells the story of the Monterey Jazz Festival, makes it special, and tells you about the education and the interplay between our education program and the festival itself. Wonderful. So we're going to look for that and especially focus on uh, those young people. Great. Um, so thank you. Ever since I really started to be conscious of jazz and the wider world of jazz, uh, the Monterey Jazz Festival has always um, it's always been a, been a kind of mythic place. I have been coming to the festival off and on 
for 59 years. In 1973. Since I was 13 years old. Since 1961. For 50 years. 54 years. Since the very beginning. Uh, the cream of the crop has come here consistently for 60 years. There's very few things that are as consistent in life as the Monterey Jazz Festival. But performing for, for, for a huge crowd of people and, and just connecting with them and sharing your music with them, it's, it's incredible. I don't know any musicians that don't love playing Monterey Jazz Festival. In, in many ways, to me, the Monterey Jazz Festival is family. Oh, I don't see any reason why this festival couldn't last forever. The educational programs that they have for Monterey are one of their most important parts. It's, it's incredible. There's no experience like it. I already know that many of today's jazz stars came through that band. It being a true American art form, uh, it started here, it was embraced by the whole world. This is a music that, it's a living language. Get ready to hear some of the most incredible music you will hear in your whole life. Jazz. Enjoy every minute in it, and don't stop till you get enough. Colleen, that was so amazing. I'm just really so happy for you that you have that to showcase to the world. Um, tell us more about when you're communicating with other people. Like, if if um if I'm if I want my son to to get involved in Next Gen Festival, if I what's the process that a parent might go through? Uh, how young do the kids have to be when they get started on the path that you, you think, okay, that's where I want my kid to be. I want my child to mm -hmm. be a part of such a great system. Um, when do you start? How do you start? So um, in Monterey County. In Monterey County. So my daughter is actually on that path. So oh, she came back. She perfect. went to Japan <laughs> with me and, and wow. came back and said, I want to do that. And how old is she now? Um, she's 10. OK. And so she's picked up the saxophone. Oh, and um, we do have instruments. We have an instrument bank and sheet music. So, oh, wow. um, so she actually borrowed an mm -hmm. instrument from our instrument bank. So we lend those to students all over oh, Monterey wow. County. Um, and so I you know, wanted to make sure she really wanted to do it. <laughs> Yeah. And so um, she's taking private lessons, so you can you can take private lessons. Okay. There are private teachers th um, throughout Monterey County. And do you have any listed um, on your website? We don't, but we if if you contact us, um, we can certainly okay. make recommendations. Okay. We know a lot. We know everyone who's in in music, mm -hmm. interested in music. Certainly, we know all the schools that have band programs. Okay, and okay. we can share. We have a list of all the schools we work with. So if you're interested in being part of the traveling clinician program, mm -hmm. you just have to be in one of the schools: public schools, private schools, charter schools. We cover a gamut of Wonderful. the schools. And then we have a summer camp program. Um, we have a special program just for middle school students. Tell us about that summer camp. So this, uh, we have, um, we are now at Stevenson School. It has both a day program and a residency program. Mm -hmm. um, so it's one week, one full week for um, for the middle school students, and you can be there? any level. So if you are still a beginning okay. student, if you've never taken up any kind of jazz music before, and you just want to expose your child wow. to jazz music, it's a great There's way a of doing okay. that. Okay. Um, and then fun. another uh, week that's just for the high school students, and um, that's a more intensive program okay. for high school students. But there's, you know, again, there are levels, you know, we work with kids who are really just sort of beginning and kids who are very advanced. We also have a uh, Monterey County All-Star program, both at the middle school level oh, and wow. at the high school level. So if you have a student who's really interested in learning jazz, this is a great place to do it. It's an audition program. Um, it's a live audition program, and we have information, again, about that on our website. We encourage kids from all over Monterey County to audition, and we have students who come from schools all across the county. It's a great way to come and meet new kids from other schools who love what you love. Um, 
And so we have those programs, and those those students rehearse once a month. We rehearse up at York School, and then they get to play all over the county. So they play for nonprofit events. Um, they play like the Ag Tech Forum. They they uh, went and played there. Um, they get to play in some of the jazz festivals, San Jose Jazz Festival, um, Jazz on the Plaz. Um, so they really travel all over the place. And sometimes they get to go on bigger tours. So they went to Washington D.C. for the Fourth of July two years ago and played. Uh, in, in our, our country's capital. So that well, was pretty exciting. You are a treasure, and so is the Jazz Festival. And, and we just really appreciate what you're doing for all these young people. It's, it's so exemplary, uh, all the different ways that you engage them, bring them forward, and help them on their journey. So thank you so much for thank being here Thank you today. so much for having me. Thank you.